What's up everybody? Welcome back to Daily Psalm where every day we're going through one of the Psalms. Here we are on Psalm 17, second time around. Hallelujah. A prayer of David. Hear a just cause, O Yahuwah. Give heed to my cry. Give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my judgment or vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes look with equity. And the word for equity is the Hebrew word mishar, which means evenness, uprightness, equity. Let my judgment come forth from your presence, and let your eyes look with equity. You have tried my heart. You have visited me by night. You have tested me, and you find nothing, or find no evil device in me. I have purposed that my mouth will not transgress. As for the deeds of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept from the paths of the violent. My steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. See, we need to stay on that straight and narrow path and not slip off. And if we slip, he picks us back up and we continue on. I have called upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my speech. Wondrously you show your loving kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand, from those who rise up against them. Hallelujah. God delivers us. And his right hand is Jesus, Yeshua. O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand. We take refuge in him. Psalm 91, and I'm, I'm going to read this again here in a minute. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to Yahuwah, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. And the apple of the eye. It just means someone that cher someone that some something this or someone that one cherishes above all others. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. And again, that's what we see here in Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to Yahuwah, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you may seek refuge. Hallelujah. Keep me as the apple of the eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who despoil me, from my deadly enemies who surround me, they have closed their unfeeling heart. With their mouth they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They set their eyes to cast us down to the ground. And you know, this is the case. This is reality. If you truly serve God, you have enemies, workers of the enemy, surrounding you, trying to be good, trying to get in good with you, trying to be cool with you trying to influence you, trying to deceive you, whether you realize it or not. But I just know, according to the scripture, 
The tears became evident a few months ago. And it's like one by one, people started exposing themselves. Some of them because they thought I knew about them. Because th they thought I had figured them out. But some of them I hadn't at the time, but they exposed themselves. But regardless, we have enemies around us. Workers of the enemy, workers of the beast kingdom. But it is what it is because we serve the Most High. And no matter what, it's Him that delivers. It's Him that protects us. And like I've said before, even if we have to go into captivity or something, we don't fear. Our God is a lion, a lion of the tribe of Judah. A lion doesn't fear. The devil prowls around like a, lo like a roaring lion, but he ain't the lion. He's the father of lies. But through faith in Jesus, we conquer all. God has given us power. We read here in Psalm 91. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you will trample down. God gives us power over these unclean spirits, over these workers of the enemy. Because he, he who was in us, the Holy Spirit, is greater than he who is in them. Unclean spirits that aren't of God. But back to Psalm 17. They have closed their unfeeling heart. With their mouth they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They set their eyes to cast us down to the ground. He is like a lion that is, e that is eager to tear. Like a lion. That's what we read in 1 Peter chapter 5. Be, a, be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion. Seeking someone to devour. And I'll just continue the rest of this scripture here. But resist him. Firm in your faith. We need to resist the devil at all points. Every thought. We need to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Every time a demon throws a thought in our head. Every time our own lusts bring up a thought in our head. We need to reject it. Resist him. Firm in your faith. Knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are, who are in the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, hallelujah, will, him, will himself perfect, confirm, and strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. He is like a lion that is eager to tear. And as a young lion lurking in hiding places, the young lions are the servants of Satan. Arise, O Yahuwah, confront him, bring him low, deliver my soul from the wicked with your sword, from men with your hand, O Yahuwah. The hand is Jesus. From men of this world, whose portion is in this life, and whose belly you fill with your treasure, they are satisfied with children, and leave their abundance to their babes. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. Hallelujah. I will be satisfied with your likeness when I awake. Speaking of the resurrection. Hallelujah. What a God we have. Let's stay strong in faith. Because the God we serve delivers from all. And even if we do get put in that situation where we have to be hurt or put to death, God is going to deliver us. We endure to the end. 
and our king reigns. At the end of the day, only his kingdom is going to stand. Only the kingdom of Yahuwah is going to stand at the end of the day. So serve him, follow him, trust him, let's spread his word, let's stay strong in faith, let's shine his light, show his love. We're supposed to love our enemies. Even though some of us are being harassed, being who knows what any of us are going through. We're, we're all going through different things. But the enemy is fighting us, tempting us, harassing us trying to destroy us in every single way possible according to the will of God because everything's in his hands he only the enemy can only do what God allows so let's overcome let's stay strong let's be ready the king is soon to come and so is his kingdom if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ call out to him today we're living in the last days all this stuff going on in the world is written in the Bible. It's all predicted. It's all prophesied beforehand. And so was Jesus. Jesus was prophesied about going back to the book of Genesis, but even the time of his first first coming on the earth was prophesied about up to the very year, the very day pretty much. It was all foretold. And many people were blind to it. Many people are still blind to it. But the chances that God or that Jesus could fulfill even eight prophecies of the Messiah is like taking a silver dollar, marking it with and this has been mathematically calculated, marking it marking a silver dollar with marker, and filling the whole state of Texas with silver dollars, and randomly reaching in and and randomly grabbing the one that you marked. There's a chance that one person could fulfill even eight of the Bible prophecies. Of the Messiah. Jesus fulfilled over 300. Proving himself to be who the Bible says he is. Jesus is the son of God. He's the savior of the world. And he's the only way to eternal life. God requires perfection in order to enter his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. It's only through faith in Jesus. And what he did on the cross. That we can receive that perfection. Because we can't earn it ourselves. So it's through faith. Through faith in what he did. Jesus was perfect. He made no mistakes. But still took on the punishment for us. Made the sacrifice for us. So that so that through faith. This is the way that God chose it to be. Because we can't earn our way to heaven. So God chose it to be through faith. Through faith in Jesus. And what he did on the cross. And a true repentance turning to him. We receive that perfection. We receive eternal life. A new glorified body like the angels that doesn't die. Our sins are wiped clean. Our slate is wiped clean. We can be right with God. And dwell with Him in His kingdom. So choose life. Anyone who rejects the free gift of God. Is going to be judged. Everyone is going to. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the judge. But if you don't accept his free gift before you pass away, you're going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, permanent death of both body and soul. So choose life. Choose life. There's not a lot of time left. Give your life to Jesus Christ before it's too late. And to my brothers and sisters, stay strong. No matter how much the enemy is thrown at you, stay strong. Endure to the end. And we will receive the kingdom. The Bible says, God, the, man, the mind of man can't imagine all the things that God has prepared for those who love him. So let's endure. Let's stay strong. Let's trust in him because he delivers us. Hallelujah. That's the end of Psalm 17. Thanks for tuning in. Still the Feast of Trumpets here. I don't know if it will be when um, I release this. But it's, uh, from my understanding, it's still, still the Feast of Trumpets, so... Hallelujah. Uh, the time is near. Thanks for tuning in. Love you guys. Shalom.